you guys heard what y'all thought was the true story, okay? The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf, as told by John Sienstam, illustrated by Lane Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But let me take you I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Nobody knows the real story, because no one's ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies, sheep, and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were a big bad wolf too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back, once upon a time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. Uh, uh, and I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind will build their house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just rock, walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little Pig, Little Pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming off, so I huffed, and I snuffed, and I sneezed, a great sneeze. Ah, poo! That was a big sneeze, everybody. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to let a perfectly good ham dinner land there in the straw, so I ate it up. I think it was a big cheese, think of it as a big cheese burger just laying there. I was feeling a little better. But I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. The next neighbor was the first pig's brother. And he was a little smarter, but not too much. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, little wolf. You can't come in. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. So I huffed and I snuck and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. Ah, too! You're not gonna believe it. This guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when it just cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf saw him. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and the second pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family because he built his house out of bricks. Good job. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. So I called. What do y'all think he called? Mr. Pig. Mr. Pig. Yes. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And 
do you know that rude little pork of answered? Get out of here! Wolf, don't bother me again! Talk about impulse life. He probably had a whole stack full of sugar and wouldn't give me one cup for my dear old sweet granny's case. What a pig. I was just about to go home and make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. I too! Good one. And the little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm a usually calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down this little pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real sneeze. Ooh, I choke! Ooh, I choke! The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two little pigs I had for dinner. I think Figgy Face Sticker Guy going to buy, meant going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't really sound exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huffing and puffing and blowing your house down. And they made me to the big bad wolf. That's it, the real story. I was framed. <laughs> but maybe you could lend me a cup of sugar. The end. <laughs>